finding the exact value of angles. Now if the angle lies between 0 and 90 degrees, then it's quite straightforward to look up the table of exact values, as you see in front of you. If it's greater than 90 degrees, then we have to perform some other method to try and work that out. And the method that we use is we try to relate the angle that we're given to one of the angles that's on the table of exact values here to try and work out an exact value. I use the cast diagram for that. Let me show how the cast diagram is made up. Okay, what I have is a series of curves here. The red curve being the, the sine, the blue being the cosine, and the green being the tan curve. And what I want to do is just to relate that back into the cast diagram so that you know where the cast diagram comes from. Now, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this diagram here the graphs up into quadrants, so I can relate the quadrants back to the cast diagram. So there's the quadrants there. This one here, quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. Okay, right, so, so what I'm looking at here is, just very, very quickly, I'll be looking at the, uh, the sine graph, the red graph that's here, and what I have in my cast diagram is a diagram that's uh, representing a circle that goes from 0 round to 90 to 180 degrees, 270 degrees, 360 degrees, which is back to the start again, back to, back to 0. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to relate the cast diagram to the diagram that I have opposite here. Right, looking at the sine graph, I can see that the sine graph in this first quadrant here is positive, it's above the x-axis. So I can say here that sine is positive. If I look in the second quadrant, I can see the sine graph is still above there, so the sine is still positive here in the second quadrant. Now when I get to the third quadrant, the sine graph goes underneath the x-axis, so the sine is going to be negative, and again, when I look at the fourth quadrant, the sine graph is negative there. If I now look at the, the cosine graph, the cos graph here, I can see that in quadrant one, the cosine is positive. If I look at it in quadrant two, well, it's gone underneath, so that's going to be negative there. So cosine is negative here. It's still negative in quadrant three, and then when I get to quadrant 4, it then appears above the x-axis, and it's positive here. So cosine is positive here. When I look at the, the tan graph, so tan is positive in the first quadrant. So tan here is positive. If I look at it in the second quadrant, well, it's negative here, so tan is negative. If I look at the graph in the third quadrant, tan graph here is positive. And finally, looking at the fourth quadrant, the tan graph here is negative. Okay, so, so what I'm going to do from this part here, I can see that all angles up here are positive, so I'm going to say that that's going to be A. A for all. In here I can see that it's only sine that's positive here, so this would be sine, because sine is positive there. Looking in here, it's only tan that's positive, so this will be t. And in here, I can see that cosine is positive, so that will be the c. And this is where the cast diagram comes from, just the, just the letters that make up uh, the quadrants that are here. Right, so this is what I'm going to be using as I go forward to try and solve some of the problems that I'm going to go ahead and complete. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to follow a, a method, and the method that I'm going to be following is this one in front of you here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be using the cast diagram to find uh, where the, the angle actually lies, so which quadrant the angle lies in. I'll also use the cast diagram to determine whether that angle is positive or negative in that quadrant. I'll then try and find a related angle, it will be an acute angle that I'll be trying to find, 
and I'll be using the horizontal line only in my calculations. That'll be the 180 or the 360. And then I'll find its exact value by using the, the table of exact values. Right, so let's get started here. What I would suggest is that uh, when you look at the questions and you think you've, you've got an idea how to, to go ahead and complete this, I would maybe freeze the video and then just check out the solutions with, uh, with the ones that I'll complete. Okay, so, so let's see what we're going to do here. So I'm going to find the exact value of sine 150. So the first thing I'm going to do with that, I'm going to draw down the, uh, the cast diagram. So that's the all sine tan cos. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw an angle where I think 150 is. So 150 degrees is there. So roughly from there to there. So that's about 150 degrees in there. So I'm looking for the sine of 150. So I know that in there, that's the sine quadrant. So sine is positive in there. So I can say that sine is going to be positive. And I'm going to try and find the acute angle in here. And it's this one here that I'm interested in, that angle. All the way around here is 180, and that's 0 degrees. So the way to find this angle here is 180 subtract 150. So what that's going to give me is the sine of 30, and it's a positive number that I'm going to use. So I then go to the table of exact values from there, and what I would do is I'd work out that that would give me an answer of a half. And that's, that's me completed that question there. Next one, I'm going to be looking at sine 225. So again, I'll just draw down a rough cast table. I know that this is 0, this is 180, this is 270 here. So I know that 225 is going to lie in here. So that will be 225 degrees all the way around to there. 225 degrees. Right, so I know that this is all positive sine, tan and cos. So I know that the sine of an angle in here is going to be negative. So first of all, I'm going to have a negative sine. And what I'll then do is work out the acute angle. And the acute angle is always the one that I'm looking at to the horizontal. And to find that one out, what I'll do is I'll take 225 first of all and take 180 away from it. 225 minus 180. So that's going to give me minus sine of 45 degrees. And if I look at my table of exact values, it gives me negative 1 over root 2. Now I've put this one in here just because it, it is a bit different. I'm not really going to look at the, the cast table for this one. All I'd be interested in doing would be thinking about the uh, curve itself. So when I've got a value that's uh, 180 degrees, 90 or 360, I would probably just look at the curve. So I know that the curve for cosine starts up at 1, it will then go down through 90, it then bottoms down at minus 1, comes back up, and finishes here at 360 degrees. So midpoint there, 180, 90, and 270. So the value that I'm really looking for from this one here is this part here, where it hits the curve, and reading off the value there. So all I'm going to say there is, that that is equal to minus 1, just straight away. Okay. One other kind of example that I'll do for you is a negative angle that I have here. So it's minus 45 degrees, so it's the cosine of minus 45. Now the way I would approach that one is, first of all, if I draw down my cast diagram, I'm going to draw minus 45 degrees, so if I start at 0 and I go backwards, so I'll just draw down there an angle of 45 degrees that would be sitting in there. Okay, and I've just gone in the negative direction. Right, so, so what I could think of that as being, I could think of that as being this angle all the way around here, because that's a normal way that we would go to look at these angles. And that angle there would be 315 degrees. Just 360 minus 45. So what I could say is that cosine of minus 45 is just the exact same as the cosine of 315 degrees. Right, that doesn't really help me because that's not in the table of exact values yet. 
So I know that this is all sine, tan and cos in here. So cos is positive, so it's going to be a positive angle that I've got. And I'm just going to do the working, although I know that this is going to work out to be 45 degrees. So 360 to get this acute angle in here. 360 minus 315, so cosine of 45. So I can see there that the cosine of minus 45 is the same as the cosine of 45, because it lies in that quadrant. And the cosine of 45 will be 1 over root 2. OK, I would freeze the video if you know how we're, we're going along here. And uh, what I'll do is I'll do the solutions as we go forward. I've got another um, five of these answers. So, so you've got five chances to, to try and show that you can do this type of work. OK, here's the answers. Same as what I've done before, the cast table, all sine tan cos, 150 degrees sitting in about here somewhere. I know that's 150 in that direction, 150 degrees. Remember that's zero, that's 180. Right from there, I can see that that's in the sine quadrant and tan is negative in there. So I'm going to say that that's going to be minus tan of an acute angle. And the acute angle I'm interested in is this one here. So that's 180 minus 150. So I've got minus tan of 30 degrees. And when I look at the table of exact values for that one, I've got a minus, the minus sign there, and it's 1 over root 3. Looking at cosine 120. Cosine tan cos. 120 degrees, still in this quadrant here, oops, still in there, that angle there is 120 degrees, so I know that it's sitting in the sine quadrant, and I know that cosine is negative in there, because only sine is positive in that quadrant there. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll say it's negative cosine, and what I'll do is I'll work out the acute angle, and the acute angle, remember, is always to do with the horizontal, how it sits between the angle and the horizontal. So I'll be 180 minus 120. So, so it's going to be minus cosine, and that's going to be of 60. So that will be minus, and the cosine of 60 is going to be a half, but it's a minus, so it'll be minus a half there. Okay, on to the last three questions that we'll do. Right, y equals sine 300, so 300 degrees. So what I'll do is I'll draw down where I think 300 degrees would be. So 300 would be somewhere like here. And that's all the way around to there. That's 300 degrees, OK? So I know this is all sine, tan and cos. It's the sine of an angle that's 300 degrees or after. Only cosine's positive there. So sine must be negative. So that's going to give me a minus sine. And I'm going to try and find the acute angle. So the acute angle is going to be this angle in here. This wee angle there. And that's going to be 360, which is here, subtracting 300. So I'll give you the minus sine of 60 degrees. If I look at the table of exact values for that one, I'm going to have a minus sine sine 60 it's root 3 over 2 from the table of exact values on to tan 135 same again just draw down an angle the the cast table and we'll put the angle in so the angle would be lying i know that that's zero remember that's 90 that there is 180 so the angle must be lying in here in this quadrant here so 135 would be about here so that angle there is 135 Right, so what I'm going to do again, I know that uh, all sine tan cos, so that sine is only the one that's positive there, so tan is going to be negative. So that would be minus tan of the acute angle. And again, the acute angle is in there, 180 minus 135. Which is minus tan of 45 degrees. And if I look at the table of exact values for that one, I'll get minus 1. The minus from there. 
Last question here, we've got uh, the cosine of uh, 210. Cast diagram drawn down, cosine tan cos. 210, well there's 0, there's 90, there's 180, there's 270, and then that's back to 360. So I know that 210 is going to lie in here. So all the way around from there to there, that's going to be 210 degrees. So I know that tan is positive here, cosine is negative. So it'll be a minus cosine, and I'll get the related angle from here, which will be this one that's sitting here. Remember that there was 210 all the way round, so it'll be 210 minus 180. 210 minus 180 will give me 30, so I've got a minus that's sitting there. So table of exact values for cosine of 30 will give me root 3 over 2, it's a minus, so it's minus root 3 over 2. Okay, so, so that's, that's the end of the, the work that we've done just now. Uh, we've used the table of exact values. Use the table of exact values to gather them for, to get the, the answers at the end. We've used the cast table and the related graphs to, to work out which quadrant it lies in and, you know, basically if it's positive or negative. And from there, I hope that you've uh, got maybe a better understanding of working out angles that are greater than 90 degrees and getting their exact value.